women are the cornerstones of the family, carers, breadwinners, and life givers. But bringing a new life into the world can be life-threatening. Every year, between 50 and 100,000 women in the world are affected by an obstetric fistula. The World Health Organization estimates that more than 2 million women worldwide are afflicted. It accounts for up to 6% of all maternal deaths. What is obstetric fistula? Obstructed labor lasting several days can cause the death of the unborn child and of parts of the mother's body starved of blood flow. Damage causes a break in the walls of the birth canal, creating a fistula or hole through which bodily waste leaks. The resulting incontinence and infection are embarrassing and humiliating. The woman is perhaps rejected by her husband, shunned by friends and family. The smell can make her an impoverished outcast in a society which may have no welfare system. However, this injury is preventable, treatable and usually curable. That is why the Islamic Development Bank Group has stepped in to help women suffering from this cruel affliction and to prevent new cases from developing. The IDB is one of the world's major development financing institutions. It collaborates with other agencies and NGOs. The ISFD, or Islamic Solidarity Fund for Development, is the poverty reduction arm of the IDB. Jointly, they are spearheading a major rescue effort for fistula sufferers. First, we must recognize the causes of obstetric fistula. Geography is one. A very large majority of sufferers are found in sub-Saharan Africa and in parts of South Asia. Here, grinding poverty, high unemployment, and lack of any power to make decisions about their lives sees many girls married before the age of 15. A cause of fistulas is pregnancy in girls too young to achieve successful childbirth. This is Lisa's story. I didn't see Hila married. Why can't married? I can't get this belay. Why can't get this belay? Lisa was unable to walk for several months. Non-availability of medical expertise and poor transport lie at the heart of the problem. Deep in the African interior, roads are bad. River crossings impede travel. It may demand a long walk to reach a primary health care centre or midwife where medical centers are few and far between. And a fistula injury can strike mature mothers and those who have previously experienced successful births. Let us listen to the plight of Satang. Fistula remains hidden and rarely spoken about in tradition-bound societies. The barriers include lack of education as well as inadequate resources. Using traditional methods, information can be put across, warnings about obstetric fistula and other health issues. Awareness is a major key to eradication. Men are targeted by NGO teams. Instead of rejection, they should offer support and understanding. The problems are greater than the resources available in some of the world's poorest countries. Improving the situation requires funding. What does IDB and ISFD support mean for many hundreds of suffering women? When sufficiently recovered, Satang had set out on a long journey to a medical and rehabilitation center. She was assessed to be sent on to a clinic for an operation to repair the fistula. Such centers are supported by IDB and ISFD. 
The aim is to help grassroots NGOs to build more and assist even more women. Fistula repair operations can cost around 400 US dollars, a fortune to many. At these centers, such activities are often offered with support from IDB and ISFD so that these very poor women don't have to pay anything. With increased funding, even more facilities could be made available. Transport, medically trained staff and operating theatres are all needed. Physical cure is not the end of the story. It marks the beginning of a new life for the women, rehabilitation. Following recovery from an operation, they are encouraged to learn new skills and trades. The aim is to empower women who have been rejected. Following a course, one might become a dressmaker, teacher or baker. Today is your graduation ceremony. And we are the shortage of trained midwives as well as surgeons in local hospitals is being addressed. This urgently needed capacity building requires funding. Then after that, local traditional birthing attendants form the front line. Behind them are the national governments, limited in resources but aware of needs. The final stage is reintegration into society as better educated people, commanding respect, able to earn a living wage. Some, even those for whom a repair has come late, will become fistula ambassadors, travelling to create awareness of fistula in their locality. Much has already been done by IDB and ISFD with their partners and local NGOs. Additional support and funding are needed. For those who have already suffered this cruel affliction, the IDB ISFD program offers a new start in life through reintegration in society, thus becoming self supporting. Today, Lisa, Satang and many more like them are happy people, leading a meaningful life away from the horror of fistula. They're earning a living and integrated back into family and society. The IDB and ISFD have already achieved much in their fight against fistula, with much more still to do. The IDB and ISFD providing resources, fighting poverty, restoring dignity.